Welcome, pilgrims, to episode 26 of the Polygon Pilgrimage. Today we are going to continue our ZBrush learning series, and today I'm going to teach you guys about masking. Now, masking is, think of masking tape. You put tape over something that you don't want to get messed up, usually when you're painting. Oh, how I hate painting. So, with masking inside of ZBrush, we're going to use this to isolate an area that we don't want to be affected on the tool. So how do we do it? Well, when I'm hovering over my model here that I want to mask, I'm going to hold the control key and you see that my RGB, my intensity, and my, my uh, brush changes to the mask. And in the middle here it says plus mask. Now if I click and drag, you'll see it paints this dark, dark substance over the surface like a dark mist coming over the land. And there we go. Now anything in that area has been successfully masked and it will not be affected by future sculpting. So if I were to say I have my Z sub on and I say okay I'm going to continue this gulch that's coming around from the other side of the planet here. I'm going to continue it and uh, oh, nope, not going to happen. It's going to stop right there at the mask and I can work around that shape. Now this is really useful just like I mentioned in painting in the real world is you mask off an area to say I want the edge to stop here so I can protect an area both from destructive purposes or I can say I can use the mask to define an area. So for example, let's go ahead and clear the mask and you clear the mask by say I have a mask painted and I want to get rid of it. I'm going to hold control and click and drag in an empty space on my canvas and the whole mask will disappear. Now say for example I had masked the gulch here, but then I want to work around it. Well, naturally I can, you know, start to work around it like this. But say I wanted to kind of have an inverse of this, where really what I want is everything but the gulch masked so that I can work on the gulch itself. Well, to invert a mask, hover over anywhere empty on the canvas, control and click once. Now we have the mask is inverted. So now this is really handy to say work on the, the gulch here, because look at this. I can really start to dig into the surface and say, all right, yeah, yeah, make a really deep chasm here. I'm talking really deep. And, oh, that's a little too much. Let me refine that. And there we go. And everything around it is not affected. Now, the other really cool thing about masking is you remember this is our object where we subdivided last episode. If I up the, the subdivisions, the masking translates through the subdivisions. So now I can use my masking as a tool for affecting later you know, higher res portions of my model. And here I can really, really dig into the model here without affecting the surface. So I can kind of cut underneath these ledges, so to speak, and create some caverns down here on the bottom of the surface. So that's really incredible that it translates all the way through and we don't have to worry about affecting parts of the model. We can protect areas of the landscape and make sure that we're only working with what we want to work with. So I'm going to clear the mask again. There we go. Now say we have another instance here where I'm working and I've painted a mask. So let's do this. I'm going to paint on the surface here and say, okay, that's good, that's good. But, oops, my hand slipped. Okay, there we go. Continue, continue. So I got this area determined that I'm going to do something with this area. And I go, oh, no, I, I got some in here. And I don't want to redraw the mask. That's kind of dumb. You know, spend all that time for this little area. So if I hold down control and pretend like I'm going to do more masking, but then if I also press and hold the alt, you'll notice, maybe it's hard to see on the video, but if I hold alt, the little plus next to the word mask turns to a minus. So now if I click, I'm going to unmask. So this is a way to kind of clean up a mask, and especially when you're at the higher subdivision levels here, where the mask is a whole lot more finite. See, I got some really finite shapes. And then I hold Alt and say, let's cut into that surface. So here you can create, look at this, I can create one of those Nightmare Before Christmas looking curvatures. Look at that. Create some really nice shapes by combining the two effects. So let's do that. There we go. Now, check this. I'm going to invert it, go to my Add, and check this out. Look at that. Oh, isn't that cool? I can just start to add these really cool shapes, guys, make some fantastic extrusions by combining the effects. Now I'm going to drop my subdivision levels, and you'll notice this is kind of what it looks like at lower. 
but if I wanted to say make some stepping up mountains, there we go, add some of this in, smooth that out, and look at this, combining all the effects together, this is the real power of ZBrush. All these things are cool on their own, but when you start to kind of put them all together, now let me up that a bit, there we go, okay, let's bring this down some more, down, calm down, there we go. Now, the problem is, this is still going to create a little bit of a harsh line here. I like this little alcove, but I really want it to be a little bit more subtle as it comes down into the form. You can also blur your mask. So here, if I go over here down to masking, there we are. Oh, don't go away. There we go. So I have a couple of options here. I can blur the mask. So if I click that, you'll see the mask got kind of muddied there. And it, you can see it a whole lot better if I return to my geometry tab here and up the resolution all the way. You can really see the effect happen a whole lot better. So let's go back into masking. There you are. You ran away from me. And I'll blur that out. So now as I start to smooth things together, it will smooth into the bottom of the landscape as well. So you get, you get a lot cleaner result. Now, I'm going to clear my mask. I'm going to mask some here. And you can also, as you're masking, to blur it, you just hold control and click on an area that is masked already. Okay? Now, if I invert this, you'll see kind of how this is handy. I'm going to do subdivision, or I'm sorry, I'm going to do sub. And I'm going to click in the surface here and dig in. And you'll see that I get kind of a really harsh surface there. But I got a little bit of a lip here because I blurred it a few times first. And that's the really cool part. There we go. If I do that again. Now, I'm going to drop my draw size and go in and smooth. And if I smooth this edge, I can see it here. It might be a little hard to see it on video. But I can create kind of a curved edge to this. And then it goes into the gulch here. And that's from the ability to blur that mask and say, you know what, I like this, but give me a little bit more of a smooth result so it's not so strong. This is really handy, guys, for when you're doing things like normal maps because you really need just a little bit of an edge for the light to catch. And that's super important as you get further along. So, now they've made some kind of crazy crater in our landscape over here. This thing is going to be the most strange-looking land. There we go. So... Have fun with the masking, guys. Enjoy it. It's super fun, and you can create some cool things like a road, and then if you invert it. Now, if I were to do just a little bit of addition, I'm not going to... I'm going to drop my draw, uh, my intensity down quite a bit, and now if I just sort of give it a little bit of... a little bit there. See, I can start to create like a road just barely up from the surface. So much you can do with it. It's so much fun. So give it a try. This is a great way also to mask off areas of uh, you can do uh, you can do masking from afar and do like this. Say, look at that, a whole section all at once, or on the model itself, you can even you know write your name in it. So enjoy this. It's a lot of fun and it's super easy. And combine this with all the other things that we've learned so far and. The more you and I learn, the more messed up this globe is going to get, and that's going to be really cool to see at the end. So keep going, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.